Tilo, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like and a comment. Subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? It's the warning. Just in case. Not saying that there is, but just in case. This is a police show. They show you how to properly do things as police officers. Some people might disagree, but, you know, I'm here to watch. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon as well. We got um, merch. And we got Twitch.com, you know, username at the bottom of the screen. This is episode 22. Season 22, episode 35, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. He stood at the gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to... My bad. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. I didn't quite like. What vehicle is it? Connect. Oh, Transit Connect? Yeah. I think it's still under it. It's cloned. Ah, okay. Wake. It's lunchtime, and interceptors Nick Priestley and Bob Hoyle are hoping to sink their teeth into a transit van travelling on Fox plates. It's a battered old white transit. It's got a big dent in the uh, offside rear door. Uh, we've had a report of a uh, Transit Connect van in the sort of white area. Uh, it's believed to be on a clone plate, so possibly a stolen vehicle. So we're just going to try and head off uh, general direction where it may head towards. Veteran interceptor Bob has just celebrated his silver jubilee as a police officer. He stops a fair few dodgy motors over those 25 years. 25 years, that's tough. Sometimes I see how long these people have been doing their job in the UK. I wonder if they could last that long in, like, America. Like, in, say, like, Chicago, Atlanta, Arkansas, like, one of these St. Louis, you know, like, one of them towns. But there's always room for one more. East St. Louis. And there it is. Actually, hey, Romeo 17, we've got that vehicle now where it's skulls laying over. Jacksonville, Nick tries to Florida. The in, but the driver gives him the slip and it's away. Yeah, we're going to interrupt the film stop. Back towards. Uh, away from Skulls, over. X ray Romeo 17 urgent. The van does a Yui in front of Nick, who spins <laughs> on a sixpence and gets back behind it. Yeah, we've got that white transit van uh, filling to stop back towards White on Skulls Lane. Speed five zero miles per hour, double crew, two pack train, the question I thought you over. With the streets busy with cars and pedestrians, safety's got to be their number one priority. And as the van's no match for the police three series in terms of speed, its driver's going to have to take some risks to shift Nick and Bob. That's received. It's now um Why is it always a white van though? Still Skulls High Street, You're going through the back roads, still four zero, safe to continue over. They've got two options, box the van in using multiple cars or get units ahead to throw a stinger on the road to take out its tyres. Both call for reinforcements and every available vehicle is racing to intercept. Of course. One we're just coming uh, Westfield Lane towards the uh, traffic light control junction uh, by Westfield Pub. Um, standby speed is 5-0, safe to continue over. The vans run a red right in front of an oncoming truck. Yeah, it's a left, left, left of the traffic lights. Uh, standby. It's, it's gone into the uh, Texaco fuel Move! station. Move! Uh, possibly back out onto Westfield Lane towards Wycover. The fastest fuel stop outside Formula One failed to throw them off. And the Stinger team lay in wait just ahead. He's dodged it. Nick only just pulls out in time. That's what she said. 
<laughs> you pulled out just in time. You was gonna be a daddy. My fault. And driver then mounts the curb to try and get the jump on his police escort. It's a left, left, left off Westfield Lane on towards Wyke Lane, towards uh, Wyke Estate over. Speed 4 0, safe to continue over. Um, stand by, it's a right, right, right towards the town gate at Wyke. He hangs a left into an alley. Oh. Bro is taking Just every missing chance. a pedestrian and a woman on a mobility scooter. I didn't even see the pedestrian and the, and the lady. It's tough. And pulls into an estate. Yeah, it's going to be an abandoned there. It's gone off-road, off-road. Um, towards White Lane. Three out, on running over. The driver and two passengers... Or Not going to lie, I'd be severely impressed if either one of these cops catch one even... One of these suspects. Lane tracksuits and trainers have bailed while the van was still moving. That way. And they've legged it in different directions. Yeah, on to, uh, I believe it's uh, the Griffin Road area. That's it over. One male in the uh, hooded top. I've lost him at the moment. Yeah, I don't even see, bro. The runners have disappeared into the estate, which is full of alleyways and hideaways. They went it's home. abandoned over that area. Three have run from it. <coughs> I'm just looking for them now. They've gone to ground somewhere around here. Pretty wick. But, um, yeah. We'll obviously go back to the van in a minute and find out what's, uh, what's crack with it. They've got to be around here somewhere. Yeah, no lie, I would have been really impressed if they, even one of these officers would have caught one of them. A thorough search draws a blank, so Bob and Nick return to the van to see if it reveals why they were so keen to escape. No stolen. Um, as you can see, they're just out, uh, out scrapping these empty drums, a bit of a radiator, a lot of crap. Uh, we've got original number plate on front seat, uh, which comes back to the shadow number. So it, it's just a pull van, which will get crushed. So one off at road. Nick suspects it's a pool van, an old uninsured banger shared by petty criminals to do their business in. And reckons today's business was nicking fuel. fuel. There were three lads in it. They'll be 15, 16 year old lads. <coughs> I ain't even seen. They've got drums in back, they might be odd makeup from petrol stations. They've got, what, two, three drums of diesel there, 25 litre drums. You know, that was petrol nowadays for diesel, 130 odd, 140 a litre. They'll sell that for 80 pence a litre. You know, people buy it often for that. So it's, it's easy money for them. You know, there's very little risk for them. There was a lot of risk, however, for the interceptors and people on the pavements and on the roads. They've come around that corner, not knowing that old lady's there in that uh, mobility scooter. That's dangerous. So luckily, they've not hurt anybody and we've got van back and that'll do for me. The van was recovered to the police pound and sold at an auction. The three runners are still oh, sold. What kind of title do you put on that now since it's was recovered and sold at auction. Is this a regular clean title? Or is this a salvaged or what? Outstanding. Coming up, sure. It's Tuesday afternoon and interceptors A.D. Fickling and Sophie Hawkswell are part of a team hunting down a suspect who's linked to a string of offences, including sexual assault. I hope we catch him. A male who's wanted for a, a serious offence and we know he gets sighted at a particular time on a particular road every day. They've been tipped off to the suspect's route and multiple units are moving into position to make sure he doesn't slip through the net. We've all been allocated a plot to go uh, park up, so we're just making ground there to get as quick there as quickly as you can. Away from the job, Sergeant Sophie is a champion kickboxer. We know. And just like in the ring, she knows that a quick strike on this job is the best way to get a KO. Anything serious, or as serious as this, we want to get them straight away. The sooner we get them locked up the better evidence we'll be able to uh, get in relation to the offence. It's a case of getting to him uh, before he knows um, that we're looking for him, really. So it probably will be a preemptive sort of surprise. Mm, yeah, I was just about to say, element of surprise. Not quite as nice as getting out of bed Christmas Day to a lot of presents, but it is going to be a surprise to him, isn't it? 
Aid is an advanced driver and motorcycle fanatic with 20 years on the force, and his vast experience tells him the suspect will have a few motoring charges on his list of offences. They don't even know if this car's insured or registered to somebody, and if so, where? And if it's him, they haven't said. The dynamic duo is soon in position and primed for action. Good luck, it, aren't we? We're just on Cow Lane, so if it cuts through back towards Warnfield, uh, we'll just wear that. And not long after, they get the call. Yankee Delta Yankee, so I just hit the camera now. We're four vehicles behind it now. It's go, go, go. 4 4, uh, we'll be coming up behind you shortly, we're in the unmarked car. So, like, so when we've got three cars together, we're looking at three cars for on this, uh, to get an opportunity. Back up to back to back. The plan is to carry out a TPAC or tactical pursuit and containment where three police cars no box teamers. in a suspect vehicle. Continuing towards Wheelham Road, uh, we're just uh, coming up behind you now. And Aidy gets his toe down to catch up. 4 4, we are car three behind you. Alright, vehicle crossing junction now with A638, it's the right, right, right. Car three now behind it. They're in position. Now they just need to find a safe place to strike. Is it the Range Rover? Stand by. It's time to tee pack. He's boxed in tighter than a game of Tetris. A seamless stop, best summed up in one word. Nice. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> now the cops need to get off the main road and onto a quieter spot to grill the driver. Job done. So you do a box. Oh, yeah. Just imagine, like, let's be real, right? SA, that charge, you know what I'm saying. To me, that is an insane charge to get. Like, bro, you were that thirsty? That's like a very, very, very thirsty charge. Like, brother, have some water. Like, it's not that serious. The stop couldn't have gone better, but now there's a problem. Apparently, no ID at all. No yeah, ID. Some other name. Is he? Is he saying it in him? Yeah. So if that's the case, then we'll. Take have we got a picture? Of it's nothing. Clear. It's an old immigration picture. Right. Okay. The suspect saying he isn't the man wanted for the assault. We have a very old picture. It's not good enough for us to be able to say whether it is or whether it isn't. So without any confirmation, he says he's got no identification Can we see it? on him at all, which is obviously going to raise our suspicions. So we're just going to look in the car to see if there's any idea that can confirm, you know, wh whether he is or isn't um, who we think he is. Until we can confirm 100%, we won't be letting him go. The team soon finds something in the car. Got a load of cash here. Big load of cash. It's not Some that Some documentation much. there in a couple of box. Oh, lovely. That's in the name of our wanted person, isn't it? They've also come across some paperwork in the wanted man's name. It's so, definitely him. And as he'd suspected, the car isn't insured. That's going seized anyway. Is it? All oh, right, yeah. It's not, it's not, his application for a driving licence is there. <laughs> <laughs> now get that, buddy. Shell Garage on Donny Road. Can we arrange recovery for it, please? No insurance. He's got a massive wad of cash on him. Uh, Man, speaking of insurance and 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 licenses, I just got. Um, I haven't had a license since 2018, and I recently found out because I was trying to do something with it. And I was like, "Brother, you don't have. You're, it's suspended." I was. Ah. And then they told me why, and I was like, ah, "That's crazy. No insurance." So I remember, I remember, I went to go, my friend called me, he was like, yo, can you drive me home? And it was this girl's car, and I'll Uber you back home, I'm just drunk. So I, he came to my house because it was close, I drove him, I got like three blocks away, pulled over, got, they took my license, no insurance, uh, and I never went to court. I had forgot all about this. <laughs> so I had to get SR22s, it's like state insurance to make sure you're insured. So I'm insured as a driver, but under no vehicle right now because I t don't have a license. So I had to pay $300 for that, and then I got court 
in five days. I got court in five days to show them the SR22 plus my license. I mean, my ID. And hopefully that goes smooth so I can be out here licensed. Do you get me? I don't know how much is there. So he's got no license or insurance anyway. So if it's not the guy we're after, he's going to be walking home anyway because we're taking his car. But he's got enough money to get a taxi, hasn't he? Yes. It's been a very Sounds successful like stop, that. but not quite successful enough for Sergeant Sophie, who unusually for her was a bit slow out of the blocks and didn't get to make the arrest, uh, much Sophie. to the amusement of her team. They're clearly so racing. To beat you out, okay? yeah. I'll tell you the truth, I got stuck in my uh, seatbelt. <laughs> I don't need to take a bite off. I said to Jar Jar, I went, I've got to beat so. <laughs> Despite his denials, the man arrested was the wanted suspect they were after. He was late. Of course he was. Anybody with a rose on their shirt sleeve, it's them. To found guilty of sexual assault and sentenced to eight months in prison. He was also given eight points and a £180 fine for driving without a license and insurance. I wonder what's the details for that first charge. Curious. A movie on this feel like movie. Is that a dam? West Yorkshire's patch contains some of the busiest motorways in the UK. And it's rare that a day goes by without the interceptors having to deal with a situation on these fast moving and often dangerous roads. So we have the uh, M62, uh, the M1, and uh, the M621, and I would imagine part of the A1. Um, it's quite a lot of mo motorway network we cover, quite a vast area. They're getting busy from five, six in the morning, right through until, until night time. And we're getting calls to the motorway quite a, quite a lot, to be fair, from a range of um, incidents from collisions to debris to uh, potential um, suicide people will want to jump off the bridges and things like that. So it is a very, very busy uh, network that we cover. It's rush hour and Nick Priestley is en route to an incident on the M62, which sounds serious. We've got a lady who's had an accident, which is in between, in between the slips, which is the exit and the entry slip. Uh, and this car's going either side of her, so she don't want to get out. That's where we're going to head, um, if we can get through. It's not ideal for us, we're in the plane car, but we've still got to go. We'll give it a go, see what happens. 23 year veteran Nick is an advanced driver, and he'll need all his skills to thread a way through to the stranded motorist. He's not going to need any skills. Battling through a clogged up motorway in rush hour is hard enough. If everyone knows you're in a police car, but as he's in an unmarked car, it's even harder. Hey, why would you not be on the shoulder the entire time? Anyway? Where's this bumper 27, mate? Apparently, it's on the entry slip. By the time he gets to the junction, his colleagues are already dealing with the situation. So Nick heads off at the next slip road, where he spots a BMW doing the same. Except the BMWs reversed across three lanes and back up the hard shoulder. Reversed? Nick goes to have a word. As we've uh, come off of the uh, off the motorway, we've seen this gentleman here uh, reversing back up the hard shoulder to come off because it's obviously some sort of incident going on. Uh, so we're going to stop this chap and have, a, have some words of advice and have to get my pen out. So y'all not even trying to give him a ticket One for One potentially real. dangerous manoeuvres, apparently enough for this fella who doesn't try to make off. Pull off. Why wouldn't he pull off into this space right here? Why would he stick? How are you? Hello. Come take a second with me. What? I want to speak to you. Come down? Yep. He drunk. So. Just tripping back. Have you got your driver license with you? I lost. Uh, I lost the way because I put the GPS and I know. I go. Oh, just, years. just. All I want to know is you got your driver license with you. It's in my home, over there. A home. Okay. Take a seat there, for please. Wait. Then back a car. The man says he doesn't have his driving license with him. 
Right, what's your name, mate? It's Kalim. Can you just spell that for me? C R N E. C R A. No, C. The driver claims he's lost. Apparently, his sat nav sent him off the motorway, but he left it too late. You know, I'm busy for you because I want to go to work six o'clock. Okay. I don't have time. I want to go. Well, the problem is, I am, I am at work. Okay, and this is my. That never works. Why would you tell a cop that? Job to make sure that people are safe. You haven't been, so I need to speak to you. I need to deal with you. Yes. Okay. And how long have you had that car? I have um, almost uh, it, four days, five days. You've had it four days? Yeah, four, okay. five days. I'm gonna tell you already, it's not registered. There's no insurance. His license is not valid. Four days, it might be stolen. The driver's told Nick he's called Carlin, but the car's insured to someone with a far more famous name. Who's Elvis? He's the king of rock and roll. Elvis. Elvis is the... I know who Elvis is, but your friend Elvis. Yes. Who's he? He's one guy who, who I am by the car. Okay, so where's your insurance? He's, uh, I buy and I put insurance in my name. So that car belongs to Elvis? Yeah, but I put the insurance in my name. Okay. You haven't done it though? The friend of Elvis is actually from Romania, not Graceland, and Nick's suspicious minds working overtime. Oh. Something, uh, could I have uh, two persons, please? Um, A58 at Chain Bar. Um, and I'm going to need descriptive details, please, uh, for both. Um, we've got two names we need to check out. And what's happening now? Uh, well, I need to know who you are. Oh, OK. As he's got no ID and apparently no insurance, the man driving the car insured to Elvis may soon be singing Jailhouse Rock. Nick's no longer lonesome tonight, as he's joined by fellow interceptor Claire Gray. Man, Claire looks like she's like six foot three, don't she? No identity on you at all, no. You can go get his phone for me. Yeah. See if his phone's in car. Okay. And just see what if he's got his wallet, see what's in his wallet. Okay. So I've got the note like that, yeah. Where's your wallet? It's in car in the well, Maybe it's checked there. Yeah. Hello, sorry, are you wife? Have you got his wallet, passport? <laughs> oh, you know, it must be fingers. Would you believe? Kept it down a brow, where everybody keeps the wallet. That's a common spot. Don't don't cap like it's not clear. It's, it's, a, it's a little bit warm because it's been down your wife's brow. Has it really? Everybody keeps a, a wallet. Yeah. And the warm wallet contains the necessary license. Despite the man saying earlier he'd left it at home. This is, this says Callum. So when I asked you where your driving license was, you said it was at home. Yeah, I, I think it's home, but I, maybe I put it in the car here or there. Okay. The driving license proves who the man is. It also proves that the man isn't insured to drive the Beamer. Okay, you do that back a little license. paperwork, okay, for no insurance. Okay. How I pay? I want to. I don't want to lose my car. Unfortunately, though, he is going to lose his car night. and will have to get his family home a different way. Okay, so the car's getting taken tonight because you don't have any insurance. You can't prove any insurance to me. Okay, so I suspect that it may not be insured. <sighs> yeah, and man, he's finally rough, dropped, brother. but he won't be driving home. And it's fair to say he's not a fan of the UK's highway code. <laughs> I go to court. Go to court, yeah. Why? Because you can't reverse on the motorway. You can't go backwards on the motorway. It's one way only. If you're driving dirty with the not proper credentials, you should have just went to the next exit. You should never even try to mistakenly risk it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I see I read the paper in Romania. It's 50, kil 50 meters. It's possible to go back. Where? In Romania. I yeah, in Romania. I read in paper. So you read, you read a Romanian yes. paper that you can reverse 50 metres yes. on motorway? Yeah. All right. The thing is, if I go to Romania... Bro was reading the Romanian tabloids. Ain't nothing real in the tabloids. I have to live by Romanian rules. Nick's no expert on Romanian roads policing, unlike the chap he's just nicked. He reckons the cops there are a bit softer on dodgy drivers like him with the right inducements. Romania, it doesn't matter if you have insurance for other people. 
The police don't take your car. The police say Romania is nice. You give 10 euro, you take your car back. Okay. Well, oh, so he's in the corrupt. Okay, gotcha. But as he's just found out, the cops in West Yorkshire don't work like this. And he and his family will be getting a taxi home. They were walking away there and it's like, you know, I feel a bit bad. And people think, well, I'm Ash. You know, I'm, I'm the bad guy here. But what do I do? I, you know, I'm stuck between rock and our place. But I, we can all do so much now. I can't let him drive off. The friend of Elvis got a traffic offence report for knowing... He really came. Insurance. No further action was taken against him for reversing down the motorway. He later produced insurance, registered the car in his name and got it back. Thank you very much. So, okay, the car wasn't stolen, all right. We've got a guy that's reversing on motorway. Let's get him off at motorway. Let's get him off at roads. We don't want people like that on our roads, as simple as that. Now, whether he's used to driving like that in Romania, oh. fine, we, we, we don't do it here. Um, he has got a license, so he must know some laws and regulations. And I think even in, in Romania, you don't reverse on motorway. Still stinging. It was bad. I also think in Romania you don't reverse on a motorway. There are many different ways to stop a dodgy motor. Switch it off! Turn it off! Switch it off! The trusty T-Pack. The eye in the sky guiding cars in from on high. Or Head past three one. It's still the A six four three Victoria Road. You've got six units behind the vehicle. But the safest way to bring a pursuit to an end is by using a stinger. Don't get stung. A bed of nails thrown onto the road to puncture tyres and bring a car to a safe stop. That's the hollow spikes there, and they're all normally covered up with these little silver tubes. That when it goes through the tyre, they drop down and the hollow spike goes through the tire and that's all the air out the tire. And then you've got the cord there that helps us pull it back so that the following cars can uh, continue their pursuit. Perfect. And then as it goes over, cop cars go past and catch bad. Did we just get an example of how a stinger was thrown? Stinger practice? Please. This is new. Yeah, I've got a vehicle failure to stop, Hell Lane, now in Fiji. Yeah, it's uninsured, this vehicle. It's the wee small hours of the morning. Exo Delta 68, can you show me on that fail to stop at Shelton, please? Can the change of... Duncan Matthews has been called to help catch an Audi TT. Speed is 83 miles an hour, and the steps come to the new traffic is light. I think it's coming down towards us. Dog handler Duncan's patrolled these roads for nearly 20 years and he's got a pretty good idea of where the pursuit's heading. Doncaster Road towards Wakefield, speed is 7-4, it's continue. Doncaster Road, should be coming down. 6-5 is coming into Wakefield. The Audi is imminent and there she blows with a traffic car in hot pursuit. They move. <laughs> Duncan's a handy driver, but the Mondeo dog van is a bit of a beast. So he'll bring up the rear with police dog Tia, in case the driver ditches and needs a run for it. We never met that police dog. Six guys on the road, requesting feedback to start the place. This is now played to 7 mile an hour. Going to round about, stand by. The Audi, which has a top speed of 150 miles per hour, is heading into the center of Wakefield. Even though it's quiet at this time of the morning, no one wants a pursuit in a city centre. They've gone straight on towards Wood Street, so they're with me. The suspect motor runs a red light. It's slowed down, but showing no signs of stopping. Yes, yes, the speed up reduced around these roads. Probably four zero. All available units are heading into Wakefield, tightening the screw on the fleeing Audi. So, Joey, I'm on road, and I get in front of it to get to a circle stinger side to keep up there. Stinger at 70 miles an hour. Yeah, continuing on to our, back towards Westgate, back towards Westgate. 
The runaway driver seems happy to do laps of the city centre and he's speeding up again. <laughs> My bad, it's not funny. You're taking him on a trip. The safest way to stop a speeding car is with a stinger. The problem is predicting which road it's going to take, but as the Audi's doing circuits around the town centre, it's just a matter of waiting for the next lap. Two red light, one, two red light, straight on. Road. As predicted, he takes another tour of the town, and at the next roundabout, the team has a little surprise. Y'all got him. Look like y'all got the police car, too. Yes, yeah, Stinger's deployed. Stand by. We're coming up to the roundabout. What should we be going on? I think it's pretty Going on to Asdale Road. Asdale Road. Slowing down. 3-0. I think we've got a flat. Stingers are designed to let tyres down gradually so the car doesn't veer out of control. This pursuit's coming to a slow and inevitable conclusion. Your indication, and It must be refreshing to be a criminal and when you get pulled over in a car high speed chase. No gun, no weapons are drawn on you. The sting has done its job and the driver surrendered without a struggle. I've had weapons pulled on me by police officers just for being the size that I am. They're intimidated. And he told me, he's like, you're a big dude, I'm intimidated. And I said, bro, go get a different job then. I'm not giving you no threat. I'm, I was talking normal like this. And I don't even think I was talking when anything was happening. Bro had a whole pistol pointed at me. I'm like, what are you doing? You, you're, you're in fear from my presence? From my stature? Because I haven't talked anything. I haven't said anything. And I was like, bro, put your gun away, man. Or go get some, 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 some more training because nobody else has it out but you. It's ignorant. Tia won't be needed tonight. Is it your vehicle? Tia was your arrest problem, tonight for dangerous driving, felt to stop the police. And no documentation from what you're saying. You understand? Yeah. Right. It's been a textbook stop, safe and successful, with the driver locked up and no one injured. That's one of the stinger prongs. Dale, around the corner, has managed to sting it as it's come past. So that's had the controlled deflation of the tyre. Uh, divisional units dropped on this vehicle. It's failed to stop for them. It's been doing loops around the city centre. And, and as it's come back out we the know city why? centre, they've had an officer further on ahead with a stinger, put the stinger down. He wasn't going anywhere. He knew that. So straight away, he's pulled over, put his hands out the window and given up. We just do uh, a breath test and a drugs wipe, yeah. if that's all right. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no worries. They're still not sure why the driver, who's just 18 years old, and driving his mum's car, Being decided done. to get himself involved in such a lengthy and potentially dangerous pursuit. At the moment, the only thing we can see is he's got no driving licence. No driving licence, no insurance. Um, they're breathalyzing him. We're going to wait to see whether that comes back positive or not. But it would appear that he's driven like that and driven like an idiot just because he had no licence. Had he pulled over and stopped when requested to, it would have been a quick bit of paperwork at the side of the road. His vehicle would have been recovered and he'd have been on his way. Probably 15, 20 minutes work. But... And he's caused himself a whole world of grief now. The driver was later convicted of dangerous driving and driving with no license or insurance. He was sentenced to eight months in prison, suspended yeah. oh, for 18 suspended. months. He was banned from driving for two years. It's a good result in the end. You know, we've got him. He's in the cells. I mean, it was text textbook. Wait, really. so does he, he have to serve jail time there. or not? No damage to or vehicles, just no suspended? injuries to anybody. Um, so yeah, we're really happy with that one.
Um, we're on Hillway now. Very nice area. Very like that. We're smacking. Very it. Oh, bosh. It's late and Ben and Ben are in classy Bailden. So there goes the neighbourhood. This pair of rough diamonds are responding to a recent sighting of a suspicious been? driver. Car's yeah, parked been. up. They just been to see about somebody local in the area, yeah. but they're just doing something suspicious, walking up and down, covering yeah, the is. face. They've been told what the car looks like and where it's parked, and it's still there when they arrive. Mind your window down. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Come and take a seat in my car. Turn your engine off. Is it your car? Uh, I'm sure to you. Yeah. Come and take a seat. What have you been up to? On my way home. Where have you been? Right, right. Some asking. Just in Monster. All right. Take a seat in there. Good man. Thank you. Hey, yeah, pal. You all right? There's nothing wrong with parking up in the posh end of town, but doesn't something matter. doesn't smell right. It smells of weed. Mm, he came over here to. to Inhale Class B paraphernalia. Have you got a drug bag? Uh, yeah, just on top of my bag. So Baby Ben goes to get a drug wipe kit while Benny Boy fills the man in on why they've stopped him. We've had a report you've been acting suspiciously. Acting suspiciously isn't illegal, but drug driving is, and Ben's nose says this guy's recently been in close proximity to down. some weed. Baby mm, Ben's favourite yeah, band are American dance duo, the Chainsmokers. And he's nicked dozens of dope smoking drivers since drug wipes were first introduced four years ago. I can smell cannabis. Have you smoked something today? Or is it just in the car? I'm just rolling one. You were just rolling one. I'm going to ask you to provide a sample of saliva. But I need to know if you've had some, if, you, if you're over the prescribed limit. All right, mate. Open your mouth for me if you do not mind. Don't bite down Nick, it is plastic and it will cause you issues if you bite down on it, all right? And we'll do it with the side. Like drink drop. Shouldn't have went to the posh area and did that. He should have went to the uh, council estates. They wouldn't have told on you. Driving, there's a level of cannabis you're allowed council in your body before being over the limit for driving. This is to prevent people who are accidentally exposed to it from being prosecuted. Okay. You shouldn't be driving a car if you're smoking cannabis. Oh, it's, 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 yeah, no, listen, it's like drink drive rule. It's that simple. You can't smoke and then drive. It's in your system for a long period of time. Whether or not he's over the limit, he has committed one offence, possession of cannabis. Have you got any cannabis in the car, pal? No, I don't see some. Okay. How much have you got on you? Is that all you've got? They're just coming so. up for a smoke? Yeah. Because you're giving some drugs, I'm just going to search your car. Okay, under section 23, Misuse of Drugs Act. Martial artist and Bruce Lee fan Benny Boys heard a fair few porky pies in his nearly two decades. Ford Escort Cosworth is your dream car? Hey Siri. What is a Ford Escort Cosworth? Not even Siri even know what that is, Ben. Done the job. So even though the driver claims the car is cannabis free, Ben decides to give it the once over and bingo. One pot of pot. There's just a bit more cannabis that we've taken from vehicle. But that one comes up as medical cannabis. And to be honest, I've never seen it in a medical cannabis tub before. And just a little bit in there. While Baby Ben waits for the result of the drug wipe, he decides to give the driver some words of wisdom. Don't use cannabis and drive, just like this issue. Listen, listen, we don't live in Canada. We don't live in Canada. We don't live in Canada. We live here. You can drink. That's legal, but you still can't. But you're, but you're still, what, smoking and driving? It's a silly law, is it? So drinking that's legal, and then drink yeah, driving, that, that's, silly, that's you know? silly as well, yeah. isn't it? The, right, so what do you think is right then? Why do you think it's right? It good, Does it not? Are you sure? Apparently, he's a medical marvel who doesn't get drowsy after psychoactive drugs, but... Well, certain strands don't make you drowsy. 
In this case, that's not an issue because the drug wipe has come back negative. Uh, it's under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's under. Still got it's fair to say, cannabis. that's a bit of a shocker. I, I was sure that we're going to come back positive, but the test line, which would prove, which would say whether he's under the influence or not, is clearly not there on this drugs test, which I'm surprised with because I've had people who have used cannabis in the morning, it's come back positive in the afternoon or in the evening, and he's clearly not really with it. So what we'll do is now we'll deal with him for the possession of cannabis. We'll take that from him. Um, but, yeah, I'm gobsmacked, absolutely gobsmacked. Well, be Even smacked, though he's not guilty go. of drug driving, he's given a warning for possession of cannabis. Hopefully, this will be enough for him not to be caught in a similar situation in the future. He's a very lucky lad, and Ben gives him some words of advice. I'm shocked there. I think you are as well, aren't you, a little bit, to be honest. You lucky, lucky man, you. Just have a think about what we've said. I know it probably won't change how you feel about it, but... It's still alive, mate. It is, mate, yeah, absolutely. All right, pal. That's all good. See you later. Bye. See ya. Having passed the wipe, he's free to go. But it's a long drive to the promised land of Canada. He's been drug tested by Bed just because he's produced some cannabis, but I think we've just caught him at right time for him not to have any or not to show up in our own system. People think cannabis should be where it should be decriminalised and legalised and so on and so forth, but I know certain people in countries are doing it, but at the moment it's still illegal it's still legal to drive and our main concern is that i do think eventually it will be legal in in the uk but i still think they'll have the no doing it while driving law for I, sure if people are driving impaired they're likely causing injury to members of public and our job is to keep the roads safe so irrespective of what we think about cannabis it's still uh, it's still in law and people will still be stopped and dealt with accordingly coming up we don't want to see what's coming out. We just want to get to it. If the interceptors had a pound for every time they did this... Take a deep breath, place your lips around the mouthpiece and just blow into it until I say stop, OK? Big deep breath in and blow until I say stop. Blow into it until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Thank you. They'd be retired and sitting on a beach somewhere. With us. Last year, over 1,600 people were killed or seriously injured due to drink driving. Damn. I'll be honest with you, we're episode. all over the road. And as the people who often have to deal with the aftermath, the interceptors understandably have strong feelings on the subject. It's disgusting, really, that people think it's all right in this day and age to drink and drive. And you're driving about in a car. Being 100% serious, I don't think that's all right. You're in a one, one and a half ton killing machine essentially if you can't control it properly you might as well be walking around the streets with a gun and it's just selfish they end up getting banned and they need the license to work or whatever then tough you know it's a simple choice to make Interceptors like Steve Oliver have learned to spot drink drivers by tiny telltale signs, like crawling along an empty road with the hazard lights on. <laughs> Chap is, it comes to my attention, he's, he's driving along as you can see with the uh, hazard cool. warning lights on, and it looks like both near side tyres are flat. Uh, and I think he's failing to stop. Steve adds his blues to the 1am light show with no effect, but a 100 decibel wake up call does the job and the Duke of Hazard pulls up. My mistake. Here goes now, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit. Ricky Van Steve's been a copper for the best part of two decades, and experience has taught him that driving like this at this time of the morning means the driver's probably on a sticky wicket. You alright, sir? Yeah, it's a drink. You've had a drink? Come and join me. Can we pop into the back yep. of the car, mate? You're more than drunk. Oh, that's side for us. The driver doesn't know if he's coming or going. Odds are he's had more than the one drink he's owned up to. Yeah. How much you had? Four. 
Thankfully, Steve doesn't have to guess if about four means that matey boy's over the limit. He has a machine to do that. Being breathalyzed before, it's also. Yeah. So, so you do this. Deep breath. Put my seal around that end of the tube and then blow steadily for me. You sit forward for me, I'll hold it. Deep breath and blow. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There we go. That's it. Steve was expecting a high reading, but this one's off the charts. Well, okay, given a positive result, legal limit's 35. Showing at the moment as 116. Yeah. All right, mate, so you're currently under arrest on suspicion of drink driving. Okay, so you don't have to say anything. You may have offence, you don't mention when questioned something you're later relying in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. We'll get you taken down to uh, Trafalgar House at Brad. No cap, though. We knew he was going to be gone, annihilated. Bro was going 10 miles an hour with his hazards on. If you're to that point, you would see in triple, double, quadruple. It's a rut. Stick you on the evidential breath test machine down there as a result of that one that tells us what's going to happen next. All right, mate. The driver's more than three times the legal limit. Oh, he's more worried about his car. Okay. Get them off, what? What's that, mate? My, my light. Get them off. Yeah, they do, play. We don't want your battery draining while well, you're there. You got a flat tire, too. Probably keeps built. They're just there on your lap. That could have been a reason why he had his hazards on. On the off chance car thieves want a knackered Zafira with two flat tires, Steve's going to make sure it's secure before heading back to the Nick. Gentlemen, came to our attention, hazard warning lights on driving along. Both near side tyres are out. Uh, we spoke to him as soon as he got out of the car. He said, I've had a drink. Uh, he's provided the roadside breath sample, uh, which has given a limit over three times the legal limit. So he's... He should have just caught a taxi. Bro, your f tires are flat and you're drunk. Just call a taxi. Currently under arrest on suspicion of drink driving. We'll take him down to the police station. Uh, we'll put him on the evidential breath ma test machine and see what results comes from there on that one. But. It goes to show with drink drivers give themselves away in the manner of driving. It might as well have a big Kenny Everett finger pointing down to it saying, I'm here. It was standing out all day. He just wasn't even thinking. Oh. This is just idiotic. Back at the station, the drink driver has what they call a moment of clarity. Indeed. Uh, you're all right. Nobody's dead. He blew 114 on the intoxilizer in the station more than three times the legal limit. Bro was hammered. He was later convicted of driving over the prescribed limit of alcohol and was given a community order with 80 hours unpaid work. They should do it though. The higher you blow, the more, the more uh, severe your sentence is. Ordered to pay an 85 pound victim surcharge and 85 pounds costs and was disqualified from driving for two years. It Drink drivers it. are, uh, they're a danger on the road. He, this gentleman's stuck. It's one thing I don't, two things I don't like, thieves and drunk drivers. But they are, he clearly had a collision with something, whether it was a kerb, whether he's run over something, both near side tyres were flat. Uh, the vehicle shouldn't have been on the road being driven in that state anyway. It did seem remorseful. Um, however, as I find people are often remorseful when they've been caught, had he not been caught, I would imagine that he would be drink driving uh, all the time. So. Um, I always take that with uh, a huge amount of salt rather than just a pinch of salt. Uh, and this gentleman has Agreed. drunk uh, an exceptional amount. He's given a, a very high reading. He will have known that he was well above the limit before he set off. But it simply goes to show that, that um, people will drink and drive without a second thought for anybody else on the road. Talk to him. That should be it, right? That's it. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notifications. If this is your first time watching, man, or you not following for some odd reason, man, lock in, bro. What are you doing?